What's up, gentlemen? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. In this video, we are going to be doing something a little bit different once again, and we are going to be ranking the countries east of Germany, Italy, and Austria for livability, such as things as low cost of living, high quality of life, crime, infrastructure, and all that good stuff. Now, I have a different video on this channel that was ranking these countries for single men, so obviously that had a little bit different slant to it. You can check that out in the description below. But this one is really going to be focused on the guys who are interested in actually relocating to these places, whether that is part of a trifecta method or you want to rotate between countries, but you're ultimately aiming towards getting long-term residency and spending three, six, nine, twelve months per year in these places in order to maximize your benefits, which once again are going to be to improve your quality of life, lower your cost of living, give you more freedom, and ultimately reduce your tax burden if that is something that is important to you, which I really don't think it needs to be said why these things are important. But if you are able to reduce your cost of living and increase your quality and increase your quality of life, that's essentially like being in the United States and getting promoted from a job that pays fifty thousand a year to to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars per year. And then if you reduce your tax burden, then you went from fifty thousand to two hundred thousand. So it really doesn't take a rocket scientist to see why many men, and not just men, but a lot of people with the means to do this, are taking their hard-earned dollars overseas in order to get that exchange. Now, with that said, I need to reiterate, these countries are not all in Eastern Europe. Some are in Central Europe, some are the Baltic states, some are Scandinavia, some are Central Europe, but they are, once again, east of Germany, Italy, and Austria. So let me be very clear about that. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get into this video. And I actually need to change my screen real quick because we got the handy dandy tier list once again. All right, so hopefully I have this set up properly. I'm using a template, so this is more than just the countries that I'm talking about. So we're gonna be skipping over some of them. But keep in mind, once again, that this really does not take into account if you are a single guy or a single lady. I have no idea what it would be like to be a single lady, but you get my point. So with that said, we are really going to be talking about value for money, residency options, and lifestyle, which is ultimately the most important for me. So we're starting this off with Albania, which is an interesting one because it is on the rise. And there is a lot of room for growth, but there's also a lot of room for things to go wrong in a place like Albania. In Albania, you have a somewhat friendly tax system, but the infrastructure needs work and there are some other issues with Albania. So as of now, without having context, we are going to put it in the B tier which just is, it has room for growth, but keep in mind, S tier is really going to be hard to get into because that means you are probably one of the best countries for livability in my personal opinion, which in this region, not going to be a whole lot on them. And if I don't know about some places, I'm just going to put them in F, F tier, I guess, because I frankly just can't comment on them. So Andorra is not relevant to this because I believe that is on the border of Spain and France. Austria doesn't really apply to this video because once again, we are not going to be talking about that. Azerbaijan, I have no idea. So I'll probably actually just leave the ones that I have no idea about on the lower portion of the screen here. Don't know what I just clicked, but okay. Belarus. Belarus is interesting, but for the purpose of this, I really want to give it F tier, and that's where I'm going to put it for now. That is mainly because I am not a huge fan of their current political climate and political situation. You can feel free to look into it for yourself. You can draw your own conclusions. You don't have to have the same political thoughts and processes 
that I presently have. So keep in mind, do your own research if you feel the need to. That said, when I did visit Minsk some years ago, it was a really great experience, one of the best times of my life. But for livability, you have probably one of the worst economic outlooks moving forward in Belarus, and you have a political climate that is unstable to say the least, and a country that is really taking measures to limit freedom of speech is probably the best way that I could put it. Bosnia and Herzegovina, I would probably put at a C tier. Don't have a ton of knowledge or experience in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but from what I do know, it's kind of just like meh for me. Now, Bulgaria, is probably an A tier, and that is because Belgrade is objectively a pretty good city, and they have done a lot of things to incentivize business owners, at least, to move there, and they have a friendly tax system, and you can objectively have a very high quality of life for a low cost of living. I will say, though, if you're a single guy, Dating options in Bulgaria probably are not going to be super appealing to be to begin with. But since you are going to be looking at these places long term, that might imply you're going to learn the language and or at least you're not going to be a weekend warrior. So any of these places you really won't struggle in if you do those two things. And and obviously, if you don't look like Donkey Kong mixed with Godzilla. You can't be just a beast of a human being pretty much anywhere on the planet in the modern day. And as I think more about it, if I were to give pretty much any country an S tier, for the purpose of this, I will put Bulgaria in S tier. Although, if I were doing like a worldwide ranking, which this obviously is not, it would not be in the S tier most likely. So keep that in mind. But for Eastern Europe, it is probably the best single option because it has a pretty decent economy and it is really tax friendly. It's low cost and you can get extremely great value for your money. Next up, we have Croatia, which let's see, probably not the most affordable place on this list, but you do get some beach vibes. The value for your money isn't particularly there. It is going to be certainly more more affordable than places in the, you know, legacy brand Western countries. But I'm not personally a huge fan and the tax rates aren't super impressive in Croatia. And the economy is kind of middle of the pack with, I don't think it has as much growth potential as some other places on this list, which is kind of why I ding Bosnia and Herzegovina, because they also don't have a ton of growth potential. So for that, we're going to put that C tier, because I just think there are way better options. Then we have Czech Republic, which I have talked about in other videos. Prague is probably one of the places that I could actually live because I love Prague as a city, but we aren't focused on solely cities. Czech Republic in general, especially Prague, is going to be a little bit more expensive. Actually, it's probably going to be the most expensive city on this list, um, at least in terms of Prague. So pretty expensive probably not going to get the same value for your money that you would get in other places. It is fairly developed, probably one of the most touristed places on this list, and it has a pretty stable economy. The tax rates are pretty middle of the pack as well. So we are going to go with B tier because I do think it is above these other options. Um, because I do think it is above these other options in terms of livability, not so much affordability. And then we have Denmark, which I'm going, I can't in good faith put that in F tier, F -tier with Belarus because that would not be fair. Denmark, just horrible value for your money. Um, high tax rates, everything is super expensive in Denmark from what I recall. 
I was only there for a little bit, but that was because everything was super expensive. I recall it being one of the most expensive places I had ever been at that point in time, which I didn't have that much money back then. So maybe that was part of the reason that I felt it more. But I still remember being like, this makes no sense why this is that expensive. England, don't know what that's doing on here, but okay. Estonia. Estonia, mm, I think we're going to go A tier for Estonia. Or maybe, nah, we're going to make Estonia first A tier. So Estonia is attractive because they have become extremely tax friendly. They are also one of the fastest growing countries in that part of Europe, if not all of Europe. And they are a very advanced country as well. So I got nothing but love for Estonia. It is probably quickly becoming one of the most livable places in all of Europe. One thing that I should have mentioned previously in this video is weather not going to be a huge factor in a lot of these places because most of these places in general don't have great weather. Now, some places have worse weather than others, but I'm not really looking at, at it on a scale like that. I guess some places might get minus two points for weather, whereas other places might get minus one point for weather. But weather is such a subjective thing. My opinion doesn't really matter because your opinion could be vastly different. But Estonia is a very, very attractive option. Then we have Finland, which is, I'm going to throw it in D tier with Denmark. Would not want to live in Finland. Expensive, high tax rates. Then we have good old Georgia. So Georgia is very, very complicated. A few years ago, it would have been S tier. They did a lot of really great things and really impressive things. But now they are kind of in a crossroads where they are either going to go with Russian, Russian isolationism and become part of that core influence of Russia, or they're going to go down the path of EU particip participation, which they were slated to um, go down that path and then that got put on hold. And they have elections coming up here pretty soon, I believe. And we will see which way the country goes. So as of now, I'm going to put it, uh, I'm going to put in B tier for now. But depending on the decisions that they make, they could go up or down. But B tier or even like high C tier probably is best for the moment. Just because there's so many unknowns. So, in short, we'll see. Then we have a place like Germany. And then we have Greece, which technically is east of Italy and all that. But I think I'm going to do another video with the Western countries. And so, we're probably going to save Greece for that video. Hungary. Okay, so Hungary, I would personally say either high B or low A tier. For now, we're going to go low A tier. And the reason we are putting Hungary there, low cost of living. You can objectively get a lot for your money because Budapest out of the big three cities, well, maybe big four, if you include Bucharest. And there's probably some others that I'm failing to remember off the top of my head. But most people are interested in Prague, Warsaw, Budapest. And out of those, Budapest is certainly the most affordable, and Hungary does have relatively decent tax rates. So once again, you can get a lot for your money, you can reduce your cost of living, and you can arguably keep more of your money as well. So Hungary is objectively a fairly good option. I will caution you slightly, though, that Hungary tends to be a little bit more nationalist than some of the other places on this list, so be aware of that. It kind of reminds me of some other places that I've been that no matter how much time you spend in, let's say, 
South Korea. They are never going to see you as a South Korean, even if you speak perfect Korean. So you can do whatever it is to try and assimilate into that culture. They're not really ever going to see you on equal terms. Same with a place like Thailand. Next, we have Latvia, which I have Estonia where, so it is pretty much B tier because it is a worse Estonia, in my personal opinion. Worse tax rates, worse economy, and possibly more expensive, although I haven't been recently to either Estonia or Latvia, but I could be wrong on that. We, we'll just say they have the same cost of living, worse tax rates worse economic outlook. So Latvia is undoubtedly, for me, a step below Estonia. Then we have Lithuania, which is mm, it's low A tier or high B tier. So it could easily be either of these. It's kind of the same story between Estonia, Lithuania, and Latvia. You kind of are betting on which one has the best tax rates, and the best economic future. And my bet personally would be es Estonia on that front. I do think Lithuania is a little bit more competitive on the tax front than Latvia, but it also kind of depends on what your tax strategy looks like. So be aware of that because it's not solely just about, you know, like personal income tax. So this seems about right. I would probably go Estonia. Lithuania, Latvia, in regards to the Baltic states. So I'm pretty happy with that. Then we have Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Macedonia, Malta. Don't think any of those deserve a ranking. Macedonia might, but I'm unfamiliar with the intricacies of North Macedonia, at least. So we will omit that for now. Moldova. Okay. Moldova is tricky. Moldova, objectively, doesn't have the greatest economy. It doesn't have the greatest economic outlook. But it is extremely cheap and you can get great value for your money. So I would probably put it somewhere around C tier as of now. Because I think pretty much everywhere is more livable than a place like Moldova, but if you are highly price sensitive, Moldova is interesting. Moldova also generally has a little bit better weather than some of these other places. It's probably one of the places I would give minus one point rather than minus two points. And one other thing is Moldova does have really good tax rates. So this is a tough one. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to bump this here, and I'm going to bump Moldova here, here, there. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Because Moldova, just such a low-cost living, super tax-friendly, that although you're losing points for weather and the economic outlook isn't super great, my bias might be showing a little bit on this one, but we are going to put Moldova here for the moment. Then we have Monaco, not going to rank Monaco. Is that Montenegro? Montenegro, not necessarily a place I would want to live, but in terms of this list, it's probably got to be a high C tier, low B tier. It could even probably be in the B tier with some of these places. Tax friendly, low cost of living. A bit boring, but a steady, if not strong, economy. So that seems about a good place for Montenegro. Netherlands, just don't know that much about. Probably going to be joining its brothers in the D tier, but I cannot comment. Norway, I don't know enough about to put it on this list as well. Poland. Now, this one is going to surprise you. 
So in terms of the things that we are looking for on this list, Poland going to be C tier. It's got to be behind Moldova. So it could be low B tier. Poland, not super tax friendly. Tends to have a higher cost of living. It does have a pretty strong economy, but a lot of thing, but a lot of people, for whatever reason, seem not to mention the fact that they are allowing legal migration and they do have pretty solid welfare state stuff going on. And so as that continues to either grow, they could be headed towards something like what happened in the United States or a place like Sweden, which we aren't going to get into for the purpose of this video, but that would be a growing concern for me. But objectively, it's more, it's one of the more expensive places on this list. So I got to ding it like I dinged Prague and it is objectively not tax friendly. So kind of middle of the pack country which gets a bit overhyped to be very, very forthcoming on that. Then we have Northern Ireland, Norway. I think I already mentioned Norway. I just don't have the data. Portugal, definitely not in the eastern portion. Romania. So Romania could be S tier, but we're going to go with A tier. And I say that because Romania, tax friendly. Romania, really low cost of living. And so you could get a lot of value for your money there. And they do have a pretty, pretty rapidly growing economy. And bonus, a lot of Moldovan women went to Romania. But that is not the topic of this particular video. So with that said, I mean, you could even put Romania probably above Hungary in terms of strict livability using the factors that I previously mentioned. I didn't mention crime rates. I didn't mention clean cities of which a lot of these places would get dinged for not having clean cities. But crime rates, they're all relatively safe. I think Moldova is probably one of the least safe, but you'll be fine. Russia, extremely difficult. I'm probably going to pass on raiding Russia for the moment in time. Because that is a powder keg. We have no clue what direction the world is going to take after this whole situation resolves itself in regards to Russia and this country right here. So, I'm not going to rank it. The people I do know who have lived in Russia previously say nothing but great things about Russia. And that said, my Russian friends, pretty much all of them, I believe, have left Russia during this particular moment. A lot of them went to Dubai for what it's worth. So, not going to be ranking Russia. San Marino, not ranking. Scotland, not ranking. Serbia, tax-friendly, decent economy, low cost of living. Wherever Moldova is, we would have to put it probably slightly above these two. Well, if I'm factoring in weather, you got it. Pretty much an interchangeable here. Enough said. Belgrade, ton to offer. Underrated city. In my personal opinion, some of the best nightlife in the entire world as well. Definitely an attractive, livable option. Next up is Slovakia. Decent cost of living. Not great taxes. Solid economy. So, I mean, I would put it slightly below Poland. And if we're incorporating other things, I would put it way down here. But to be objective in this video, I would put it there. Now, if this was my personal ranking, it would be F tier. But it is not my personal biased ranking. So I have to be fair. And I will put it there. Then we have Slovenia, which is practically F tier. Not great value. Tax situation, probably one of the worst on this list. 
and not the greatest economy. So, you know, putting it with Belarus, once again, probably unfair. So let's go with low D tier for Slovenia. And shout out to Slovenia. I am partially Slovenian. So this is nothing against my Slovenian brethren. Which takes us to Spain, not ranking. Sweden, boom. High crime rates, expensive. High tax rates, hard pass for me. And then we have Switzerland, not rating. And now we have Turkey, which is a tough one. Insanely unstable. Unstable government, unstable economy, low cost of living, fairly tax friendly. Oh boy. So much volatility in the Turkish market. You have insane inflation. I would rather live there than Poland. So I am going to put it there. We're going to move Poland down. Hmm, <laughs> would I rather be in Turkey than Moldova? I think Istanbul offers a lot. It's kind of a toss-up between Moldova and Turkey. You could convince me either way on these two. I would rather be in Albania for sure, though. So that is where I would be a little bit more closed-minded. Ukraine. Now, in the current situation... I am not too interested in anything having to do with Ukraine. So for me, in the current situation, I would put Ukraine for F tier because that situation is a pretty big deal. Now, here is what I'll say. Depending on the outcome of the situation, this could rapidly go up a couple notches. I would probably put it somewhere uh, it would kind of be in this Moldova, Ukraine, Turkey trifecta because it has an extremely low cost of living. It's going to have extremely great investment opportunities, could possibly have great gross potential, and it has a relatively tax-friendly situation. So Ukraine would be of great interest to me. The problem with that is there is always going to be someone on the eastern border that makes that an unpleasant time at certain stages in life. So for me, Ukraine gets massively dinged because of the current situation. And even without that situation, there are some other things going on in Ukraine, which doesn't make it particularly attractive to me, although it could be attractive for investment. And I think that is pretty much the entirety of the list that I feel pretty comfortable commenting on. Let's do a quick double take on this. So let's start with F tier Belarus and only Belarus. Seems fair because I don't think any of these other countries should be lumped in with Belarus. Political instability. Um, and yeah, we're just not going to open that can of worms. Sweden, not a fan. Slovenia, although I am partially Slovenian, not a fan. Finland, not a fan. Denmark, really not a fan. Bosnia and Herzegovina, that seems about right because it's low cost of living, although not a lot to do there. Croatia, not low cost of living. Czech Republic. Georgia, once again, depends on the elections and what they choose to do with their future because it could rapidly go up to an A tier or it could go down to joining Belarus in the F tier. Montenegro seems about middle of the pack. Yeah. Slovakia, this is an objective look at it, a subjective look. It would be F tier for me. Poland, yeah, overrated, not the greatest. Turkey, I would prefer Turkey to Poland. Ukraine, I would probably prefer Turkey to Ukraine. But 
there's just so many unknowns with Ukraine right now because there's so much opportunity after this whole situation passes and my Ukrainian brothers come out on top. I would definitely prefer Ukraine to Poland, that's for sure. Moldova. Yeah, this is... I, re I remember what I said now. Moldova, Ukraine, Turkey, you could kind of sway me any which way. Albania, from what my experience has been, is a really interesting option. Government, a little corrupt. Keep that in mind. So, yeah, they lose some points there, but low-cost living, relatively tax-friendly. Serbia, Latvia, Lithuania, that seems about right. Hungary, Romania, Estonia. I mean, I think I nailed it on the first go with this one because I would say Bulgaria is definitely in a tier of its own for the things that we talked about in this video. And then Estonia is rapidly, rapidly getting up there, though. And Romania has Bucharest, which is a large city. So overall, Bucharest might be the number one option. If you're incorporating everything, I'm talking dating, nightlife, food, the whole shebang. And once again, this is rating the entire country, not just a city. Because if I rated cities, this list would look massively different. Like Prague, Warsaw, Budapest, Tallinn, Istanbul, Kiev. Like a lot of these places you can't even compare to, you know, Sofia or Plovdiv. So keep that in mind. But overall, I feel like this is a pretty solid list. So let's go ahead, switch the screen. So let's go ahead and wrap this baby up now. Let me know your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. What I get wrong? What did I get right? What would you change? And with all that said, thank you for watching. I truly appreciate it. I know this was a little bit longer of a video. And I will see you guys in the next video. And as always, peace, much love.